presence. Amen? Yes. To bring God's presence. He's, he's already here. But well, perhaps he just wants to do more. So, uh, listen, listen to this. The Lord, this is in Zephaniah. The Lord in the midst of us is mighty. He's mighty. Woman in the orange over there. I want to confirm your word. Because it says in Zephaniah, I'm going to read the Zephaniah 15. I wasn't going to read it, but you, you spoke it out. It says, The remnant of Israel shall do no unrighteousness Amen. and speak no lies, Amen. nor shall deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. That's right. Mm -hmm. For they shall feed their flocks and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. thank you for bringing that word for it. That was, that was on the list that I wasn't going to use or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the Lord our, in our midst is mighty. So I want to I want to tell you uh, our pre uh, favorite sister here, De uh, Debbie, taught us about William Penn. Well, 300 years ago, a man came to the shores of this nation. William Penn. I don't know if anyone's looked that up since Debbie spoke. Was that two weeks ago? Or I believe it was. Last, was it last week? Was it two weeks ago? And he was in a, he was given a gift of 28 million acres. That's phenomenal. That's the largest land grant ever given to an individual in history. Right? And he and they called him the proprietor, the governor and the proprietor. So he, I mean, according to the king, not according to the indigenous, not according to the Indians, if I might, but but. But he owned the he owned the land, and and he said he said this about the land. He didn't say that the king of England had given it to him. He said he said the Lord has given it to me. He wrote that to one of his friends in a letter, and he said the nations, the rest of the world, want an example of how God and man can establish a government. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. That's unique. I don't know if anybody ever said that before or, or, or since. <laughs> no, maybe some. There are some countries now that are declaring God as you know Jesus is, is Lord, right? But but he said he, an example of how man, God, and man can establish the government of righteousness and justice. Mm -hmm. And I can remember the first meeting that I went to uh, with with uh, uh, Kathy's uh, uh, committee. That's the word that the Lord gave. Mm -hmm. That He wanted to establish righteousness mm -hmm. and justice, mm -hmm. right standing before God, justice across the earth. Mm -hmm. You can see obviously what that means. Mm -hmm. That's the cross of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Righteousness and justice, and I believe righteousness and justice is going to—it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to manifest. God said He's going to manifest in our presence. Him, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. He said all three of them are coming in John fourteen. So they're going to manifest and turn this nation back to righteousness because mm. the rest of this country, which was founded on the principles of God, and, and in 1680 when William Penn came, he was talking global. He says the nation, That's right. the world, the rest of the world. We just started talking global last two, a couple decades, right? In 1682, he says the nations want an example. Yeah. And he said... He said, I, so Penn said, I have made it the seed of a nation, a holy experiment, an example to the rest of the world, to the rest right. of the nations. God wants to call the nations into righteousness. Mm -hmm. He's going to give them a choice to be goat nations or sheep nations. Mm -hmm. So I said this to them and I say it to you. I come to bless you tonight. I come to bless you. I come to bless that seed. I come to water it with my words. So I bless Philadelphia. I bless Montgomery County. I bless the state of Pennsylvania. I bless this nation. I bless all of you who, who, who spoke in, in worship and, and the singers. Uh, and, and that the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart were acceptable That's right. unto the Lord. So I, I bless you, the people, and everything that concerns you. Amen. I bless your jobs. Amen. I bless your, I bless your family. 
You know how much fun it is to bless somebody? Lots of fun. I, I bless you guys, man. What did I say? We're, uh, uh, Wild Wednesday warriors. Huh? <laughs> I bless you. I bless your dreams. I bless your bank accounts. I bless your businesses, your prosperity. Because you guys are chosen. You guys are gifted. That's right. You guys are anointed. That's right. You guys are blessed. Amen. You're blessed of God. That's right. And it's such a privilege just to, to pronounce a blessing over you. So I'm going to read. Just the rest of, of what Zephaniah said. Then we're going to move on into another subject. He said in Zephaniah 3.14, it's, it's joy, joy. That was talked about a number of times. So in God's faithfulness. So listen to what God said. Zephaniah 3.14 and 17. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. You guys shout right from the get-go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. For the, for the Lord has taken away your judgments. Let your mind be clear right now. The judgments have been taken away. I, there's Amen. a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of shaking going on. Everything's upside down. But I, but I think because that God's on the scene. Amen. I'm going to share with you where he showed me where, where he was in the armies of God coming on this east coast. Ready to cleanse this land again? That's right. He said, he has cast out your enemy. Amen. The king of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. Amen. Hallelujah. That's that's worth the praise. And the, and the, the king of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. Praise God. You shall see disaster no more. That's right. And you believe that, Martha. Yes, yes, yes. You will see disaster no more. That's right. No more. Fear, trying to intimidate us no. on the dark side. God says, conspiracy. He says, don't say conspiracy. He says, fear the Lord. Fear me. Let the Lord be your dread. Let him be your fear. Amen. Amen. So in that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear. Amen. It's right in there, Zephaniah. Do not fear. Zion, let not your hands be weak. And again, the Lord your God is in your midst. Amen. He's here. That's right. He's right. He's with us. He's going to demonstrate himself in whichever way he wants to. <laughs> the Lord your God is in your midst. The mighty one of Israel will say, he will save us in the name of Jesus. So listen, he says in this, at the end, he says, I will rejoice over you with gladness. I will quiet, he will quiet you with his love. Debbie, we gathered here this morning and we had a love feast. Ooh. Yeah, that's what we did. We didn't know what we were going to do when we gathered, but, but the word was love. We, we got anointed with love. He will rejoice over you with singing. How about that? The Lord's singing over yeah. us. Yeah. And just yeah, he's going to quiet us with his love. He's going to take away all of our fears. No more dread. Dar, would you come up and would you mind coming up and sharing? Uh, she was here this morning. Well, they're recording it, so you might want to do that. Just a little. We were here today. Is it true? Uh, like an ice cream cone. Like yeah. this? Like you're looking at it. When we were here today, um, I didn't want to leave. Like, the spirit of the Lord moved through here. And um, Debbie told the story of King James speaking to a lady that was 101 years old. And, you know, we tell people about Jesus because we want them to go to heaven, um, don't want them to go to hell. But I want to make it through this. <laughs> he got on his knees for this. 101 year old lady, and just he just held her hand and he just told her, like, that Jesus loved her and just poured out love. And it made me just want to go and just love, like, the guy that's trying to beat me out on the street in the car, the guy that butts in front of me in the line, and my family, like, my, my grandkids, my kids, my uh, Nia's my kid, she's my son in laws are my kid, just, just pour out. 
love and I don't know, it was just the anointing. And when we left here, I went to call George and tell him how incredibly powerful it was. And I couldn't wait to get back here. And I was trying to, I don't even know if you noticed it, but I was trying to find words and it was even hard just to have been in the presence of the Lord, just even have the words be normal. I, I was almost getting worried about myself. Like, what's wrong with me? Like, I can't, I can't, I know what I want to say, but I just can't make it happen. And just last night, I was doing stuff in my house and I went upstairs. And I just got on my knees and I just asked God for more, more of him, more and more. And I'm just watching. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. Uh, it, I'm getting it. I'm getting what I asked for. And it wasn't even probably 20 minutes later, I was looking at something on my phone and um, a devotional came through almost like God was speaking the words exactly to me. And I'm, I'm moving forward. Like I am God. not going to be held back and I'm going to stand for Jesus. And I'm really nervous about doing this, but <laughs> I'm going to do whatever he asks me. That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> So no, you're, you're ruined. That's what that's what they're called. You're ruined, right? <laughs> no turning back now. That's right. You're ruined. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I've been with the Lord for 41 years. Praise God. And yeah, and man, it's a long time. I remember when I first got saved, guys would say I've been with him five years. I've been with him 15 years. One old guy, old old guy, said I've been with him 20 years. And he goes, I wonder what that's like. <laughs> there it is, right? Double it. So, so I want you to know there's a lot of things going on inside of you individually. That's right. That that may mess. So he's doing something different with each one of you. He designed each one of you specifically to relate to him. And and you can only you're the only one that can do what God has designed that he wants to do. That's right. Through you. That's right. You're the only one that can do that. So when you conform to that, when you learn to walk in that by the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot of stumbling and everything else goes on. But there's also a bigger picture of what God is doing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you uh, a, a bigger picture of, uh, of some of the things the Lord has done. So the, and the reason I'm doing this is to give you that big picture, but also to encourage you as you look at what the Lord, what the Lord has done and what the Lord put on a map, uh, that you will be encouraged to let him do inside of you what he wants to do. So it's it's individual. It's specific. That's right. You're designed like no one else in the world. That's right. Has been designed. So we got together with a group of people back in in Allentown in 2001, uh, and that was in April. That was before 9/11. And and there were 12 churches got together, and there was a thousand people. We were worshiping the Lord, and and, and then we wound up taking communion. And the Lord showed me uh, uh, in a vision as I was worshiping, and sometimes. I don't know, I just had to sit down because a download was coming. Right? <laughs> and, and I saw off the off the East Coast, all right, so here's Pennsylvania, off the East Coast, we're talking New Jersey, New York, here's the East Coast. He said, and I didn't know what a what a tsunami was, but the Lord said there's a tidal wave coming on the land. But it but it's not like on the water, although maybe, but it was like a cloud of the of the hosts of the army of the Lord off the east coast. Waiting to come on the land again. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is like at the head of it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, well, he's the Lord Sabaoth, right? Mm -hmm. He's the captain. That's not Sabbath, Sabaoth. There's only like yeah. two places in the Bible. He's the captain of all the armies That's of right. God. Amen. So he said, he says, they're coming and the existing structures are going to be shaken, right? And roots of trees uh, will be loosened. And some of these trees, and I thought they were unrighteous trees, and the great harvest is going to take place. But a lot of these trees were righteous trees, and 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 uh, God used them to go across uh, the world. We're talking 20 years ago now, or go across to other nations. But also, there's a group that are, that are going to go across this United States, across Pennsylvania, across the United States, even to the nations, right? Just like the pioneer, pioneers did, because Pennsylvania is the keystone state. So he said, when this tidal wave hits, it's going to go up the rivers, right? It's going to go up the rivers. So there is the, I have to hold this, right? Hold Stay on that button, James. I never, this is new for me. <laughs> so so here's, here's the Delaware River. 
right? It's going to go up the Delaware. That's, that's the New Jersey border. It's going to go up the Lehigh. It comes down out of the Poconos and goes over to the Delaware. And then the Schuylkill comes up here in Schuylkill County and comes all the way down to hit the Delaware, down near Penn's Landing. So, so this move of God is coming and it's going up the river. So, so it's not going downstream. It's going, it's going up. Hallelujah. And he says, uh, many people have been, have been called aside. You know, like I came out of the church in 94. And I've been in, in the church at different times and in different positions. But a lot of people were called aside to themselves. And no reflection on your pastoral shit. But, but a lot of people just became intercessors. Maybe it was just the older group or whatever. But you spent a lot of time interceding with the Lord. So when this flood hits, it's going to be a great equalizer between Baptists, Catholics, Pentecostals. Uh, everything, fall, all denominations, everything will fall into this river. As those trees are harvested, they're like falling into the rivers, uh, and everything gets washed, gets cleansed, it gets purified. But all things that are that are there, there's a persecution that's going to come upon this new move and the people who are flowing with it. But this flood. This flood will cover the land. It's going to cover this state. It's going to cover as the waters cover the sea. And it's going to be the glory of God. But not just the glory of God. But a knowledge of the glory of God. So God wants you to get to know and me about his glory. That's right. How to get in it. How, how to enter into his presence, how to get filled with that glory, and then how to dispense it. That's right. And when you dispense it, where to go back to get more. That's right. <laughs> right? Get the battery recharged again. Yep. So it's going to be not just the glory of God, but I believe it's going to be a knowledge of the glory of God. We're going to be a people that know their God who That's walk right. in the glory because man is the glory of God. Mm hmm so uh, there's a way by land. I said way by sea. I'm going to guess, go through just some of this stuff real quick. We'll see. But in, uh, anyway, oh, we'll go back to that later. Right. So, so what the Lord said, I was in a church up in Allentown and walked up. The Holy Spirit led me up to a, uh, to a it was an Assembly of God church at the time, and, and walked in and, and, and talked to a pastor. And uh, uh, it was on a Monday morning. He was standing in there making copies. And, and I walked in and I said, "Are you the pastor?" He said, "Yeah." And he says, uh, "Are you uh, are you a are you a minister?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Are you a pastor?" I said, "No, I was pretty young." Yeah. I said, "No, I'm a I'm a, 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 a prophet." Because <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. This was back in 2001, right? I was called into the prophetic in '85, right? And, and, and I'll tell you what happened in 2003. But but I said, "I'm a." The prophet, and guess what he said? He said, you are. Come back into my office. I need to talk with you. <laughs> See, he was, he was in the assembly of God, and they did they weren't fully embracing the fivefold ministry. Ooh. Ephesians 4, 10 and 11, right? When God ascended on high, he gave gifts to men. That's right. Uh, he gave some men to be apostles. Some men to be prophets, some men to be pastors, evangelists, and teachers. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, we're talking about the offices. We're That's not just right. talking about, there's prophets, but there are people who operate in the office of a prophet. That's right. There are apostles in training, and then there are those who are recognized, and they're in the office of an apostle. So it has a different authority. It has a, a different a, a anointing to it. It has a recognition from the body of Christ. Right. We recognize, I heard a guy up in Connecticut one time, uh, first time I heard someone say, he, he came in and they introduced him as a prophet, and he stood there and he says, I'm the gift. <laughs> <laughs> I go, you know. And then actually you go, who does this guy think he is? <laughs> Only Donald Trump could say that and get away. But, yeah. <laughs> but he was right. He said when he ascended on high, he gave gifts to men. Some to be. All right. So, so we need to recognize that if you're called into that and he's grooming you for that, whatever it is, it's a journey that you're on. But when the time comes, that recognition 
you need to be able to they'll 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 let you know mm-hmm. when you're accepted when you're not accepted <laughs> but then but sometimes it's hard enough for you to accept it yep all right so anyway let me move let me move on so i was in that church uh walked up i would meet with him on friday morning for, for like an hour or two and just we would wind up face down on the floor in his office every Friday before I even started going to the church and I would just prophesy to him. I'd tell him what the Lord was talking to him and, and his wife about or, or whatever. I mean, the Lord, and, I, and he was, I was establishing him in the office of an apostle. Mm-hmm. So I had, uh, I had been walking in this unusual walk and uh, I spent two years in, in one uh chapter in the Bible, in Ezekiel 44. And Ezekiel talks about uh, the outer court priests that perform all the services and the, and the duties and get the sacrifice in the old temple. But there are inner court priests, those that, that don't minister to the Lord, as they do, but not initially. They don't do the, the upkeep of the house, but they turn their backs to the people because a lot of people are worshiping idols. They turn their backs to the people and they minister to God. That's right. And when I saw that, I go, Minister to God. <laughs> I thought God ministered to us. How do we do this? But but he so he invited me. It took two years in one scripture, Ezekiel 44. And when I got in there, he shows you how to come into his presence. And uh you know, it, 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 in that it's it's Levitical and it's it's uh you know uh, different ways of closing, but all those things have spiritual meanings to them. But when you get in there, he says he's grooming you. To come into the very holy of holy, into his heart, into his presence, right. and minister to him, to know him, to know his face, to know his heart, to, to know how to how to live and to move and to have your being. That's right. Him. So and and he says, uh, we're to teach the people what's holy and what's unholy. That's right. What's clean and what's unclean. So. Sometimes, a lot of things going on in this group. Maybe we'll, we'll get a chance to start refining a little bit, becoming sensitive to God, the Holy Ghost, and refine what's of God and what's not of God, what's clean and what's not clean. Right? Because we don't want you to eat unclean food. Right? Words. Words make. Words establish. Words create. That's right. And we want you to know the anointed one and his anointing. So, so there's a discerning that goes there. Another thing he says, he says, if I can train you that way, I, I will become your possession and you will become my possession. That's right. right? He, and then he says, I will become your inheritance. Right? We, we're, I'm sorry. He, when he died on the cross, right? For the, he suffered everything for the joy that was set before him. That's well, right. you were the joy that was set before him. That's right. Right? Mm-hmm. So, so we became his inheritance. But if he can trust you in going deeper and deeper into that holy place and knowing him intimately, then he says, "I'll become your inheritance. You inherit me." That's right. Think about that. God will trust himself to you. That's good. Let that settle in for a minute. That's a big deal. Mm-hmm. You're gonna minister to God. Mm-hmm. And God's going to trust you. He's going to groom you. He's going to train you. Yep. He's going to refine you. He's going to encourage you. He's going to correct you. Because mm-hmm. he loves you. He's going to discipline you. Mm-hmm. Others may, you may not. Mm-hmm. You ever see that little riddle? Huh? Others may go, you may not. <laughs> it's a good thing. It's a Christian thing. It's a good conference. You may want to know about it. God says, no, you can't go. That's Others right. may, but you may not. That's right. You're going to have to learn that. Yep. So anyway, the reason I said that was I became his possession. He became my possession. And it says you have no possession of Israel. I'm telling you that because my mother and father built a house and it was probably worth about $100,000. You know, it was just handmade when they, when they did it back in the, in the, in the 40s, I guess. But and I had a, a brother and a sister, so it was three of us. So I was worth about $33,000. <laughs> <laughs> And I said to mom, I says, uh, take me off the inheritance. Mm-hmm. What do you think mom thought? You nuts. <laughs> How can I do that? I love you all the same. 
She's like my mom. She said, you're not getting anything anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're the only son, right? <laughs> no, whatever. But, but they didn't understand that. You know? But I was being obedient to that word that got me out in, in for two years. That's right. So, so, but he backed, but he backed off. She wouldn't let it happen. We had a lawyer in. So the Lord <laughs> knew her so tenderly and how much he loved her. And then she got saved and she read the Bible. And, and I lived with her for a number of years and she helped me with my business. And then a couple of years later, I had been on an excursion across Canada uh, and back, and we stayed out in Olympia Park for a uh, national park, national forest for uh, a week. And he said, call back to the lawyer and have your name taken off the inheritance. And I did. And mom knew. She, she understood that because she loved the Lord also. So I really believe this word of God. Yeah. How about you guys? Yep. Yeah. Do you really believe it? Yes, I do. I mean, when you read it, I just want to ask you a question. Is it about Jesus or is it about you? Nope, Jesus. Yeah. No. It's about me when I read it. Yeah. It's about what I got to do when I read it. See, it's not about Jesus. It's not about somebody else. It's about, yes, it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus in me. Yep. And what Jesus wants to do. Living through my life, my personality, my gifting. And my calling. So I read it. I read it like it's about me. Yeah. I know Jesus. Because <laughs> right? if I'm not doing anything that's not related to the Lord, I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not a happy camper. I'm not satisfied. So anyway, the, so mom dies, and um, my brother and sister had to dispose of the property. So they said, uh, Jim, I was Jim then. Um, yeah. God, yeah, I wasn't James yet. I was weird, but I wasn't weird enough to be James. That came a little bit later. So they said, Jim, Jim, we gotta we gotta dispose of the property. So uh, you know, I want the dinner. They said, What are you gonna do? And I said, Well, I don't know. I said, let me talk to my covenant team. We we had we did everything that was religious in that church in Orfield, Pennsylvania. We did everything that was religious. We took it down. We took the staple, uh, the steeple off the church. We took everything religious. We just stripped the place, you know, uh, because we did, we were tired of religion. We're tired of religion. Right? And God said to me, He says, in, in soaking in him one day, He says, James, He says, I want you to live in a tent for 120 days. I said, Wow, that, that's pretty, that's pretty long. I said, What? One, two, three. Four months. One month, right? And I had a little pup tent. They say a three-man tent, but only one man. <laughs> so I go to the covenant team and I said, uh, my family wants to know what I'm going to do. And so well, what are you going to do? I said, well, the Lord told me he wants to live in a tent for 120 days. Now, they had 13 acres of property, right? It's beautiful. It's nice. And then Jamal Turkey Farm <laughs> behind that. I mean, it was gorgeous. So, so they're thinking about it, praying about it. And one guy says, Oh, he says, I got a tent. My wife just bought a Jeep Liberty, right? <laughs> and they gave her this promotional tent when she bought the Jeep Liberty. Now, this tent is 12 by 12. You know, it's got a front door and a back door. It's got side windows on it. Another, another guy says, uh, oh, I've got one of them 10 by 10 tents, you know, and, and I'll put your, your little mess hall next to it. So we went out in the property, me and a couple of the kids, and we, we, uh, we made the, the, I always had a vision of the, of the prophet's camp, right? You know, that's a little cowboy in me. You know, that should be on a, on a ranch out west somewhere. So we drew, we drew one of those and we stayed the outward tent was going to go. And the apostle said, well, I want to, I want to, uh, I want to put up another tent further up the driveway. And I said, well, what is, what is that going to be? He said, it's going to be David's tent. Amos 9.11. Anyone knows what that? Anyone knows what that says? Amos nine eleven. Do, do you remember years ago when the when the tent of David, when twenty four hour praise and worship were going up, prayer meetings going up, praise and worship and adoration, and if, and here's what, here's what he says in Amos nine eleven. He says, "In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I'm going to repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old." So when David brought up the Ark of the Covenant, right, it didn't go into a church building. It went into a tent. And then he hired singers and, and priests and, and praisers and worshipers 
And that's what that's what they were. So so that's what David's tent was about. So I'm in this tent for 118 days, and a 40 mile an hour wind came through, and the tent was stood. It did. But a couple, about a week or two later, a 50 mile an hour, a Jubilee wind came through, tore up that tent, tore up David's tent, which was a 20 by 20 yellow and white striped tent. It was held down the, the, uh, by 12 tent pegs, right? And every day it was it was nice. We we would the, the pastor would come by and I'd come out to the road and meet him. We would go inside or outside. If it was nice, we'd go into David's tent. We'd get a pickup truck full of chairs. We'd go out. We'd worship under there, and God would do signs and wonders in the sky and everything else. So that got torn up with this 50 mile an hour wind. Mine got torn up with the 50 mile an hour wind. The prophets kept and. Uh, I had, a, I had the, my tent repaired and gave it back to the guy who bought the Jeep. We took it back to the to to uh, uh, to a, a guy who sewed up tents. We, we fixed uh, David's tent and we put it in the shed. So the next year, I'm I you know we hired a guy to do the 13 uh, acres around, but I would do a little riding motor uh, mower right around the, the church, maybe about a quarter of a acre. And the Lord said in. He said, I want you to take those tent pegs that held down David's tent. See, this whole, we, you know, on the peak of the church, we had Amos 9-11, right? I mean, this thing was just coming about. You know? He said, I want you to take those tent pegs, and I'm going to show you how to stake out the territory. Amen. Now, the Lord is believing me. I don't know if you all you know what spiritual mapping is or whatever, but that's kind of what this is. The Lord has been grooming me for doing that years ago. Maybe the Lord sends you on some missions to find some things out historically or socially or, or religiously where things happen, right? So I took those, those uh, 12 pegs and set them aside for the Lord. And with the covenant team, uh, three or four different occasions, sometimes with, their, with the wives and the husbands, he showed us where to stake out that tent, that peg. So the first one we went to, oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> the first one we went to was, was down here. That's where the church was right there. That happens to be the 12th peg. That's Allentown right there. This is the Schuylkill River. And the Lord says, I want you to get on a Penn's Landing because I had read, I had read the Seed of a Nation book. And I knew what Penn said. You heard what he said. So we went down and we put, we drove a stake in right there. Now this is after 9-11. And we get down there and the guys are working on a platform there. They were doing some kind of a, a, a presentation. Oh, I do. There you go. All right. Okay. And, and uh, I come up to the Schuylkill River and I look and, you know, I'm from, from up in Schuylkill County. So you can walk right up and walk right into the river. Well, down there, I mean, there's pylons along the, the bank and everything, and it's about a, a half a mile across. I go, where do you want me to put this tent? Pack? So I came, came up. There's a little cove that go out right there. And I went down, and I looked, and there was a pylon in there. You know what a big telephone pylon looks like, about like that. And there was a split in the middle of it. And the Lord says, I want you to drive that stake right there. So 9-11, there's security around. There's construction workers here. I walked back to the guy in the pickup truck, and we got the axe. The axe, by the way, I sharpened, I sharpened that axe up yesterday before I came in. And, uh, and it was a little bit shorter than this one. And we got the tent peg. The tent peg is 24 inches long. It's about an inch thick. And I'm putting it into this tent peg. And I'm putting it in, and I'm going, bang! Bang, bang. It goes into about six inches, and the guy with me says, uh, that's good enough. And I said, no, it's not good enough. It's got to go in further. It's sticking up too much. It's obvious. I went bang, 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 and guess what happened? The tip of the pin hit the handle right below the axe head. The axe head comes off and goes into the school. <laughs> Sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> Elijah was, I read it this morning, Elijah was extended, expanding the tent camp, right? And, and, and he said he should chop down a, a wood or a stick and we're going to make this new dwelling. And he had a borrowed axe head. And he, he said it was borrowed. He, so he, Elijah got a stick through it in the water. And, and metal obviously is, is heavier than, than wood. And the axe head floated to the top. 
So I'm standing there holding the axe handle like this, and a guy goes, you may as well throw that in. I'm not doing any good now. And I read that story a couple days before, but for some reason I didn't do it. Well, I'm not sure why I didn't do it, but I didn't do it. I guess where did not want me to do it. So anyway, we planted it, we planted it there. We went up to Delaware, right? And uh, to uh, right across from Easton to Alpha. Uh, I'm not going to go through all these. That's num number three, number four. We went all the way up here to Madame Morris, where New York, New Jersey comes together. We we come across, by the way, that's Promised Land State Park right there up on Interstate 84. Yeah. Huh? I've been there. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's interesting. It's yeah. named that, right? And we came across to Scranton. We did one right at the courthouse and, and the police station in Scranton. We came down uh, Interstate 81. And we're coming down. Uh, there's Freeland there. Uh, there there's Calaris uh, 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 there. Wh wherever the word was going, we, we came down. Now, this is 81 here, and these are the tributaries of the Schuylkill River. So we're coming down. Uh, Ten of those have been, have been staked out already. And right here is Hamburg, where I live. Everybody knows where Cabela is, right? Yes. And we're getting ready to head back. We're going around that clover leaf, and there's a big tree there to this day. And where it says, that's where I want you to plant that stake. So I said, Gary, pull over. We went out and we planted that stake right there. And I, I get out of the, the van. I looked up, and there's Cabela. Guess what Cabela said? It's the world's finest outfit. So if you're going to equip an army to go across this nation, doesn't it make sense? God would send you to the world's finest outfit. So, so back in that day, I had to take two different Pennsylvania maps, but before the Lord expanded that vision, this is what it looked like. It was just on the eight map island. It was from Philadelphia to the Poconos, from the Delaware River to Lancaster, right? And I gave it to one of my intercessors. And I said, it's okay. See what the Lord sh shares with you, what the Lord tells you. So she came back about a week later and she goes, James, she says, you know what you have there? I says, yeah, I know. Philadelphia, Pocono, Delaware River. Lehigh River, Schuylkill River, 84, 81. I can name every stake on that. She says, James, that's an eagle. Mm -hmm. And she says, it's a flying eagle. And it's flying west across this state and across this nation. Somebody, somebody get, read Revelation 4 7. Read it nice and loud. You want to do it? I can do it. You can do it. Revelation. Revelation 4 7. I never saw it. I never saw what, what we had done except that the word showed us how to how to do it. We just followed it. And the first creature was like a lion, and the second creature like a calf, and the third creature had a face like that of a man, and the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. Wow. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? I didn't know that until I looked at looked. it. Look at this. I knew what I did. She said, that's a flying eagle. So we knew we had something. The Lord was doing something. So as you know, we, we set up the prophet's camp. I'm just telling you what I did. I don't know what God's going to tell you that he wants you to do. But we set up the prophet's camp. We set up a regional vision, which is on the eight and a half of us. And we set up in Pennsylvania at the, as the Keystone State. So Pennsylvania is the key. It's the key to this nation. It's with the Holy Seed. Now, there are a lot of other seeds planted up and down the East Coast. They're celebrating Cape, uh, Cape Cod now, where, where Mayflower landed. But whether it's Virginia Beach, or St. Augustine, Florida, or, or Jacksonville, Florida, or, or Rhode Island, there are a lot of seeds scattered up and down the East Coast. I believe Pennsylvania is the holiest apostolic seed that the Lord planted. Because he spoke into it as to what kind of fruit it would bear. So it's the key to this nation. And then in Matthew, he says this, I give you the keys of the kingdom That's right. of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And again in Matthew, 11, he says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, and men, forceful men, lay hold of it. So there's a, there's a war going on. 
Amen. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. Amen. We're fighting against principalities Amen. and powers and dominions and, and wickedness in high places. That's right. And God's got something. He's got an army off the east coast that's about ready to come on to this land. And we have a part to play in that. Because I've traveled with other prophets and apostles uh, and, 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 and evangelists. And, and uh, prayer walkers that have walked every part of this territory and we prophesied over it, we prayed over it, we, we've torn down uh, idols and, and uh, redeemed the land every way God has shown us. I'm talking about over the last 20 years and who knows what's done that even before we had done that stuff. So the land's been prepared. So it's like God it's like God took his image on earth on it in heaven and went boom that's what I'm doing. I want, to, I want you to see what I'm doing. So you're part of something bigger than you. You're part of something bigger than the church. You're part of something bigger than just this region. You're part of something big That's that right. God intends to accomplish on the earth. So I, I don't know what stage you're at, whether whether you're new in the Lord, whether you're a first day Christian and just glad you're, you're born again and you're going to heaven, whether you're full of the Holy Ghost uh-huh. or whether you've been through the fire. And you're ready to do everything God's way. That's right. But I just encourage you, follow what the Lord wants to do. It may it may take five years, it may take 15, it may take 20, it may take 25 years. But know the Lord, knows what, what he's doing, submit to him, surrender to him, That's right. and follow him. I didn't I didn't know I was just obeying. Yep. But they didn't go into the promise land for what reason? Scared. But, you know, because they did they disobeyed. Right, they were uh, but because of unbelief and disobedience. Yes, they, they were feared. Two and a half tribes said, "Oh, we're going to sit. We're going to sit back. We like it back here." Mm-hmm. Uh, two and a half tribes said, oh, "We we like the way the schools are. We we got you know <laughs> we got land for all the cattle to be fed. Everything's cool, uh, Joshua. But but you guys can go." We could. Joshua says, uh, "I got news for you. You can come back and sit on your haunches if you want to." But put your war clothes on because you're going to help these guys that believe this new generation is going in and claim all the promises. Amen. See, all the promises are yes and amen to the glory of God, and they still exist because God has not changed. So we're not destroyed. All those, he can't lie. All those promises still exist, and he wants to give you the kingdom of God. He says, it's my good pleasure to give you the kingdom of God. Right. So don't displease the Lord. That would be a foolish thing, wouldn't it? Give up your life. Give up your ways. Give up your own understanding. Give up your own ideas. Give them up. Give up your, I don't know if he asked you to give up your inheritance. He, he did me. I don't know how that's going to turn out, but I know that something, I turn to serve him, and I have full confidence that he's able to take care of everything behind that's me. Amen. That concerns you. Thank you. Three kids, 12 grandkids, that know Jim and yeah. Jimmy. They don't know James. God had to change my name and change my character. Because he did. He changed me into a different man. I'm a different man today. They don't know me. Now, I don't know how bad it goes for the gifts to you. I don't know what he's going to ask you to do. But listen to what he said in, in Jeremiah. Now, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you. You. Over the nations and the kingdoms to uproot, to tear down, to destroy, to overthrow, and then to build and to plant. You know, when I read that, I go, I wonder why all these cities are being destroyed. <laughs> Maybe I'm not too upset. Because what are you going to rebuild if it's not destroyed? Mm, Isn't that interesting? Yeah. That, that could be interesting. God's shaking, tearing down, throwing down. We've been praying. We've been pulling things down, powers and principalities. We've been breaking curses. We've been prophesying. Oh, now, listen, I'm going to tell you something. You, you, this land right here, uh, this, this, particularly this one third of Pennsylvania right here. I spent 20 years in that land. I know that that land knows me. And I know it. 
I've been to every place that, that God sent me to. Every place I was able to get this vision. Everything he asked me to do. Everywhere I took communion. In me and in the ground. Everywhere. Helping a prayer walker or doing this or prophesying. Every weird stuff. Unusual stuff. Because we're a peculiar people. And that means we're a hidden treasure. That doesn't mean we're just awed all the time. It means we're his peculiar treasure. That's right. Hidden in a safe. Right? So, 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 you know, there's a chosen, there's a chosen vessel. If you go to a potter, right? There's all kind of pots out on the, on the pottery table. But you walk up to the master and you say, uh, give me your chosen vessel. He said, you want my chosen vessel? Uh, just wait a minute. I got a special one. Yeah. It's been specially designed and prepared <laughs> just for you. You let me make that choice. That's the word. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. You're a royal yeah. priest. That's right. Uh, a chosen people. A special treasure to God. So, how many know James Nesbitt? I know David does. James Nesbitt, a prophetic artist. He said, he said uh, 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 a piece of art is never done, like a painting. They always add to it. It's always added to, right? So the Lord started to, to add to this. So we got the holy experiment down here, the seed of the nation. We know about William Penn. We know about the flying eagle. We talked about David's tent. Let's look at, let's look at Revelation uh, 5.13. Real loud. New King James, please. Who, who can get it? Revelation 5.13. Somebody want to volunteer? And every creature which is, which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. So, about... There's a flying eagle and flying west. And he's going, and he's going to the, the nations because the seed was planted and the seed was spoken into and the word will return forth. So, so there's blessings coming out of Pennsylvania. Blessing and honor and glory and power. Now, I don't know about you, but when that wave, when that tsunami hits, when those that armies of God come on the land, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna surf that wave right across. Pennsylvania, right across these nations. And I've been across Canada too. I'm not boasting. Let me just boast in the Lord. Can I boast in the Lord? I went all across Canada and back to every providence that was on the on the land, but there was one I didn't go to yet that's called White Horse, Saskatchewan. So when I go across Pennsylvania and across the nations, I'm going up the West Coast to White Horse. I'm going to get on my White Horse and I'm going to the nation. And I believe that. And I'm going to keep saying it. So God has to do it. So I, so I don't know what he I don't know what he's doing, what he's doing with you. But God's got some big, big plans. That's right. So let's see. There you go again. Philadelphia. Oh, yeah, we're gonna do see. Let's hear about Philadelphia. Would you like to hear a prophecy? I'm gonna, I want you to hear one. I hope you want to hear it. The prophecy about Philadelphia. And I bought my uh, special Bose CD player. Now this thing is about 10 years old, but it's alive today. Yes. I want you to hear what God says about Philadelphia. Number 10. No, no, I'm going to turn. I got enough on here. Yeah, I just want to get up. I'm going to get to the right one. Thank you, Father. Show your people, Lord, their value. Show your show their work. There we go. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, I am releasing a new frequency upon Philadelphia, for it is a frequency of redemption. It is a frequency that shall release my holiness, my righteousness, and my redemptive nature in the earth. For behold, a sound has been withheld, but now a sound has been released. And as the sound was released, I came with a new breath. 
for many have thought this was the fall season of the year, but behold, I have changed the season. And I am welcoming, welcoming the city, and I am welcoming the region into a springtime, into a springtime, into a springtime, where I make all things new. For the Lord said there is coming the sound of a shaking and a rivaling that I want to release upon this people and upon this land. And I will turn the heads of many, and I will turn the hearts of of the sons to the fathers, of the fathers to the sons, and I will bring them back to the place of foundation, and I will restore the desolate places, and I will restore the streets in which to dwell. Get ready, says the Lord, for I am releasing it in frequency and the sound, and shall bring forth a transformation and a renewing. I am changing the mind of the people. I am changing the heart of the people. I am changing the landscape. I am changing the soundscape. For I am releasing a new soundscape, new frequency, new notes, new sound, new words. I am erasing the curses. I am invoking the blessing. I am restoring what was broken. I am healing what was sore. I am the God, says the Lord, and there is no other. And the Lord says that even if there will be a crack in the liberty bell, the Lord says that I am cracking up in the heavens this night over a city and over a region. The, the, the veil has been torn, so enter in. Step in. Do not stand on the outside of the end, but come in. Don't look in, but come in. Don't look in, but come in. Do not pass by or pass in. I will not pass you over, but I will abide. I will abide. I will abide. And I will come again in this city, says the Lord. And I will fill it with my glory. I will fill it with my vengeance. I will fill it with my triumph. The Lord says the days of tragedy, the days of trial for Philadelphia are coming to an end. I am evicting the modern dynasty, and I am releasing a renovation and a restoration of my original intent. Get ready to occupy, get ready to advance, get ready to move forward. When there is a sound that a generation has been waiting for, and if you will release the sound, I will release my breath. For there are many structures in this city. But they're just structures without breath. And if you don't have breath, you're dead. And I'm about to release my breath again in Philadelphia. And what was dead shall live. And what was dying shall be revived. Get ready, says the Lord. Release the sound that releases the shaking, that causes the shifting, that brings the alignment for the assignment. Your day is not coming, but your day is here. Usher it in. Usher it in. Usher it in. Lift up your head. Open up to everlasting glory and the King of glory, the Father of glory. He will enter in. So there is a triumphal entry. There is a triumphal entry on this Thursday night. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is entering in the gates of this city of Philadelphia. He's entering in the city like never before. Come on, lift him up. He will draw all men on the Come on, there's a new sound. There's a new realm. There's a new glory. There's a new person. There's a new wind. There's a new breath. There's a new life. I'm sure it is. Come in again. Turn 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 I believe the Lord said, the Lord the Lord said, the Lord the Lord the Lord the the Lord the Lord said, 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 the Lord the Lord said, 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 the Lord the Lord the Lord said, 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 the He's laid it out. He's mapped it out. And now he's saying to his book, he's coming on this station. He's coming on someone else. One more time. He's coming one last time. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pray. Pray. I bless you. I bless you. All of you endeavors. I bless you. Go ahead. Go ahead. 